Here's a question. How has Mitchell Johnson turned himself from loose cannon into lethal destroyer? Bold in. Mitchell Johnson might look like a character from the good, the bad and the ugly, but there's been nothing bad or ugly about his bowling in the last four months, during which he's taken an incredible 59 wickets at a meagre average of 15 apiece. What a transformation from the sort of pantomime villain we saw three or four years ago. Remember the Barmy Army song? The words now would be, he bowls to the left, he bowls to the right, Mitchell Johnson gives every batsman a fright. How has he achieved this dramatic transformation? Well, first, let's look at the figures. His wicket-taking rate per test has been pretty up and down during his career. He started reasonably in 2007 and increased gradually with an excellent 48 wickets in 2009, then went into a steep decline in 2010 and 2011. But look at his wicket-taking in the last two years and seven wickets per test this year, up there with the best in history. Now, after taking his 264th wicket in his 59th test, there are only five bowlers with more than 250 test wickets who've got better strike rates, and they're great bowlers too. Dale Stain tops the list with 362 wickets at an amazing 42 balls per wicket. Then just behind him is Waka Yunis from Pakistan, Malcolm Marshall, the great West Indian, Alan Donald, and going back a little bit in time, Fred Truman, the old England and Yorkshire stalwart. Just behind them, Mitchell Johnson with 264 wickets at an amazing 50 balls per wicket. The Australian bowling coach, Craig McDermott, doesn't claim much credit for Johnson's recent phenomenal success. Um, you know, he's got a little drill that he does that he just walks through every day um, that uh, helps him with his lines and, and getting his arm path right for getting his wrist behind the ball to get his seam up. Johnson has an unusual method, a very low bowling arm. You can see it here, the arm coming from about 11 o'clock. Most bowlers would release the ball from much higher at about midnight. Johnson's is more from this sort of position and a lot can go wrong with that action. If you let go of the ball a bit too early, it can end up veering off wide of the off stump. And if you let go of it too late from this angle, it can go sliding down the leg side. And that plays havoc with a bowler's confidence. Now what Johnson has done is over the last couple of years, he's raised his bowling arm just a fraction. You can see on Hawkeye here, his release points. In 2009, with a very low bowling arm, you see the release points were also very low. And here in 2013, the release points just a fraction higher. And that can help massively with the bowler's confidence. In comes Mitchell Johnson now. The wrist position is also really important, trying to keep your hand behind the ball as long as possible. And this is what a bowler is trying to achieve, following through with the wrist bolt upright behind the ball. If a bowler tries too hard to bowl too quick and is lacking confidence, sometimes he can fall away like this and the wrist flops to the side and he loses control of the ball. What Johnson's done is he's built up his core muscles a lot with his trainer so that he actually stays behind the ball with a really strong delivery like this and his wrist and everything behind the ball when he follows through and that helps the ball to swing and go on a better path. This is what it's like to face Mitchell Johnson. Now we come to the third ingredient in Johnson's rapid improvement. He always had pace, it was something he was born with. He acquired control. What he lacked was focus. His wife, Jessica, helped him with that. She was a karate champion and he said every night that he got home from the Ashes, she said to him, keep bowling short at the English. She has a very aggressive nature. So, you remember what they all say? Behind every successful man is a canny woman. Don't forget to tweet me your questions at Cricket Analyst. See you next week.